Hello, my name is Sean Spear. I'm the project director of the Ontario 360 project here at the University of Toronto. Uh, as viewers know, we've been releasing policy papers over the past several weeks, tackling the big questions facing uh, the province of Ontario. And this week is no different. We are pleased to work in partnership with uh, the Urban Policy Lab and the Institute on Municipal Finance and Governance here at the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy to tackle the all important question of provincial municipal relations here in the province of Ontario. Uh, the paper was produced um, by leading mini provincial municipal experts, Gabe Edelman, Enid Slack, and Thomas Hackard. And uh, we've just finished uh, one of our policy breakfast sessions where uh, our esteemed authors uh, uh, shared uh, their findings and analysis with a mix of uh, stakeholders, Ontario public servants, members of the political arm, uh, political arm of, of government, uh, and uh, members of the broader University of Toronto community. Thanks so much uh, for the partnership uh, and uh, for, for your paper. I think uh, it certainly gives a lot of food for thought on how to, um, how to deliver better services on behalf of Ontarians. Uh, maybe just start uh, with the fundamental question. Um, what does, what's the paper's key findings and analysis, and why uh, do you think that uh, now is the time um, for what you describe as a who does what review? Well, thanks, Sean. Uh, the paper calls for a who does what review. Uh, we think it's time uh, to clarify the relationship between the province and municipalities in terms of delivering services. Um, why now? Well, I think uh, both uh, provincial and municipal governments are facing uh, fiscal problems. and. Uh, I think in some ways they may get worse in the future. Um, as we look to the future, we see an aging population that's going to have an impact on things like long-term care, which is going to affect municipalities. Uh, the impact of climate change events is going to have impact on municipal expenditures as well. Um, are we ready for that? Can we face those challenges with the current configuration of provincial and municipal responsibilities? Mm -hmm. One of the interesting observations uh, of the paper is if Ontarians think that we have watertight compartments between the province and their municipality, um, the, the, the paper demonstrates that that's not the case. Do you mind just talking a bit uh, about the extent to which um, provincial and municipal governments are intertwined, both with respect to uh, laws and regulations and policy, but also um, financing? So the average Ontarian would be Really, it would, it would surprise them to realize how intertwined many services are and at the same time how many services municipalities provide mm. across the board, everything from your roads and bridges all the way to other social services. Um, and uh, what it, from the, the resident's perspective, what it means is that sometimes it's really hard to know who does what and that's why we're calling for this review. But it's also difficult for those in the system, working in the system, delivering these services to really understand how to improve these services because of how intertwined these services are. To give you an example, you know, $64 billion, give or take, is what local municipalities spend on many of these public services. Uh, most of the revenue uh, that goes towards paying for those services, roughly about 80%, is through own source revenues, property taxes, user fees, etc. But the provincial government uh, also contributes upwards of 15% mm. of that total, and it changes service to service. And mm. so the average resident wouldn't know that, for example, fire services are almost exclusively paid for uh, through municipal uh, funding, and yet at the same time, on the fiscal side of things, it seems quite clear, but there are all sorts of provincial regulations and statutes that dictate how that spending, how those municipalities spend those dollars. And I think one of the key, uh, key points in the paper is that there are limits on thinking about, uh, about generalizing across services, that the truth is we're, it would be a mistake to aim for centralization uh, across services or decentralization across services, that there's a need for uh, a holistic uh, way about going about this that recognizes that in some areas you're going to want um, more collaboration, not less. And in others, there may be room to streamline or rationalize who does what. Thomas, do you mind just talking a bit about this? This is something that I think um, um, uh, it's one of the key points in the paper, which is to say um, uh, the question of centralized versus decentralized de decentralization kind of misses the point. Yeah, so one of the things that we do in the paper is, is look at sort of the evidence and, and the cases for both sides. And, and on one side, you know, a lot of people will say that decentralization, the, the subsidiarity principles, what some people call it, suggest that you should uh, you know, deliver, put services at the lowest level where things are still efficient and, and equitable. Um, 
and, and that there's innovation to be found at the, lo at the local level, so decentralization can help with that. But there's also cases where centralization clearly you know, makes sense, and there's cases where you need provincial standards, um, or, or, or whether national standards as well, you could argue, um, where there's cases where there's externalities, where, um, where the costs are, you know, uh, a municipality might uh, face costs that are borne by people outside the boundaries of, of, of the municipality. And so that's cases where some kind of centralization would make sense. So what we say in the paper is that there's no one size fits all solution yes. to this, right? There's, you have to look service by service um, and really consider this question of uh, a spectrum that we put forward where do you want, to, is, it, is it most integral to have local input into, into the service? Is that what is really most important here? Or is really what's most important the provincial standards and making sure that everyone has access to the same level across the province? And, or maybe is it somewhere in the middle? And that can help you guide this question of should be funded by the province, should be funded by municipalities, should be cost sharing. And that brings me, I think, um, uh, to, to the main thesis of the paper, Enid, which is to say it would be a mistake to go about making these judgments uh, at an odd ha ad hoc or isolated basis. Uh, instead, uh, it's important to establish a framework, a set of principles that can guide judgments about uh, uh, which level of government ought to be responsible uh, for different services, the extent to which there may need to be joint or shared responsibility, and then the age-old question of how do you ensure that whichever level of government is responsible, it has sufficient uh, uh, fiscal capacity to deliver. Do you mind just talking about why you think that principle-based framework is necessary and maybe giving viewers a sense of some of the principles that you think uh, the provincial government, uh, in collaboration with municipalities and other stakeholders, ought to bring to bear as part of uh, who does what review? Right. Well, you're right. I mean, each, each service is going to be a little different in terms of that spectrum that Thomas talked about. There will be some cases where you, you really need provincial standards uh, that need to be met and you, and you lean towards that side. There will be other cases where you want more autonomy and more innovation at the local level. And, but each service is going to be different. Obviously, what mm -hmm. you say about social services may be different than what you say about fire. And so we need to go through a series of principles rather than an ad hoc, let's just put this here, put this there. But what are the reasons for having it provincial fund, provincially funded or municipally funded or cost shared? Um, w once you've made that decision, you have to look at the fiscal capacity of, of uh, the, the government that is delivering it. So if we're going to put more services at the local level, um, is it appropriate uh, to do that when all of the local level has is pro are property taxes mm -hmm. and user fees to pay for them? I think of social services. Social services redistribute from high-income households to low-income households. Uh, the property tax isn't the best way to, to do that redistribution, mm -hmm. and income tax is much better. So then the question becomes, do we give municipalities access to the income tax revenues, or maybe the province funds it because they do have access to income taxes? So, so one of the principles would be, for example, uh, the, the fiscal capacity of the government that is delivering the service. Uh, Gabe, um, I, I'm sensitive to taking up a lot of your time this morning, but I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, ask at least one more question. Um, across the series of papers that the Ontario 360 project has released over the past several weeks um, has been a common theme of place, uh, a recognition um, that uh, different parts of the province are facing different economic uh, and social circumstances and that it would be a mistake to think uh, one size fits all, not just with respect to services, but also with respect to place. Um, you talked in your presentation a bit about um, the elephant in the room in most of these discussions, which is the city of Toronto um, and the unique opportunities and challenges as a major global city versus, say, Thunder Bay, where I'm from. Can you just talk a bit about um, how the, the process that you set out in, in your paper uh, would enable policymakers to grapple with this question of different um, economic, I mentioned cultural, but even uh, demographic um, circumstances that parts of the province uh, finds themselves in. One of our key recommendations is to look at uh, the problem of how to deliver services effectively and efficiently by taking a regional approach. So there's no one-size-fits-all approach and that may mean in many circumstances an asymmetrical solution, mm. right? And that asymmetry 
historically, uh, if it's existed, has been a, a division between what we do for the City of Toronto versus the rest of Ontario. Mm -hmm. And what we're suggesting here is to maybe expand that notion of asymmetry and consider on a service-by-service -service basis uh, what makes sense for different regions. Maybe not picking out other municipalities as well because the scale of some of the challenges that Toronto faces maybe requires a separate solution for Toronto, but certainly region by region across the province, there are potential solutions out there where uh, you know, the, the ideas, the, the, A, the problems, but also the ideas of how to, to organize a cost sharing arrangement or to organize streamlining uh, coordination across different agencies and service delivery uh, organizations, uh, that would require a place-based approach, as you put it. Uh, and, and just my final question, and I, I put this to each of you or, or whoever wants to answer, um, uh, who does what review is not necessarily a, a, a new concept. Uh, the Ontario government has experimented with uh, a similar exercise in, in the mid-1990s. Uh, the paper argues that enough time has lapsed and uh, uh, new circumstances, even forward-looking circumstances, justify uh, a, a, a similar review. But there are some differences between the, the, the review in the 90s and what you're proposing. In particular, um, the paper recommends that instead of taking on all aspects of the municipal provincial relationship in Ontario, that, uh, that at least at the beginning, the exercise zeroes in on health and social services. Um, can you please uh, give viewers a sense of why you think we ought to start there? and um, why you think um, th that the exercise may be most fruitful in the areas of health and social services, this, uh, rather than, say, focusing on issues of, as someone mentioned, fire um, uh, or uh, roads or uh, public transit, all of the various issues for which um, uh, municipalities are responsible. Well, I, we recommend to start with health and social services for, for a few reasons. Uh, one is that those are the areas where when we started looking at the div, uh, division of funding, uh, where you saw the most, what you might call entanglement, intertwinement, however you might want to call it. Um, and so that, and it's, as a result, it's where it raises the most questions about who does what. It raises questions around uh, pay for say, this question of are the people who, decision makers, um, you know, have, do they also have the funding res responsibility that, that should be aligned with, with that decision making. It raises questions about f local fiscal capacity. Um, and so the, these are areas where they're most pronounced and we thought it makes sense instead of trying to tackle all at once, let's focus on these areas where these areas things are most pronounced because then you can learn from it in the future. The other point to make is that these are areas where the province is currently already doing some work, where municipalities have really expressed an, an urgency, where this question of the aging population and the healthcare system really comes up in terms of are we um, in, uh, integrating services in, in the way that deliver, would deliver the best services for an aging population. And so tackling health and social services makes sense in terms of you know, what is really ahead of us and, and, and what people are talking about. And the last point I would make is that those are the areas where Ontario is unique. You know, most, most of the provinces don't have health and social services at the municipal level in any way. And so it's, it's worth grappling with that question. Mm. Well, uh, I just want to thank you again for your, uh, not just your contribution uh, in today's paper, but uh, the, the partnership between these three initiatives here at the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy. I think this paper um, uh, is an example of the Monk School's capacity uh, to um, produce um, policy analysis that has relevance and connectivity to the questions that policymakers here in the province of Ontario or nationally or even indeed globally are facing. And it's been a pleasure to work with you and your, your uh, respective uh, initiatives here at the school. And uh, I look forward to the ongoing discussion about your paper and hopefully um, some evidence that um, the Ontario government uh, is internalizing um, the analysis and hopefully the, the, the recommendations in their own work. Thank you for your contribution and thank you viewers uh, for continuing to follow the Ontario 360's uh, work here at the Monk School of Global Affairs uh, and Public Policy and uh, stay tuned uh, for future videos covering issues including foreign credential recognition, apprenticeships, energy reform, uh, and a number of others as we try to leverage um, that policy expertise here at the University of Toronto and indeed across the province of Ontario um, to speak to the issues and challenges facing, uh, facing our province. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for your important contribution today. Thank you. Thank you.